Okay, uh, hi everybody, uh, ICS321, and uh, today is November 5th, and I'm gonna share my screen uh, now. Okay, I don't need this anymore. And uh, I think I gotta get good at just doing this where I go. Boom. Oh. I haven't seen that before. Well, that's, that might just work. All right. Um, so it's, uh, so today is November 5th. And um, so tomorrow, you know, you have the day off. And, and um, if, you, if you are an American, uh, then you can vote tomorrow regardless if you registered yet. Now you can vote. You now you can register on voting day. Okay, so I'd like you all to try to do that. Uh, I don't need to. I don't need to um, preach because it doesn't matter. I mean, it, we're here in Hawaii. So there's not too much that can happen <laughs> unless you're li living in uh, House District 40 or 41 or Senate District 19 or um, uh, House 45. Uh, those might be, oh, S House, Sean Quinlan's having some trouble up there in my EA. Probably none of you are, are coming from way up there. Uh, so anyway, um, uh, so I've, uh, f I've finished all the assignments and quizzes that are, require you to think hard uh, and post to them. Uh, and then so, so after you're done with the, this assignment, assignment four and the quizzes, then we're gonna work on a project. And the project is gonna be a database project. And it's gonna be designing a database and writing constraints, and it's gonna be like, you can at least team up, okay? And uh, it's, a, it's a project that I've had before, and it's a, it's a, it's a project that I've gotta get done for, for, for something that I'm doing. And um, uh, so I will I will tell you I, I will tell you about that later. But uh, uh, probably uh, next Wednesday I'll tell you about that. Next, um, so so I'm going to see you again on Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, and then I won't see you on Monday. So I actually have you. I actually have this down here as we're meeting next Monday, but really we're not. Uh, and it's too hard to fix this. So you know whatever. Uh, so so there's only going to be 24 quizzes that mean anything. And then uh, uh, there's gonna be quizzes after that, but, but it's gonna be asking you progress on your project. See, I'm gonna try that, okay? I'm gonna try to have you give me reports. And so just a paragraph, and, and you can probably have one or two in there where I didn't get anything done since last time, you know, but you know, sometime or another. And so that way you should help you kind of pace yourself and so on. Um, and so now, so, so let's, so today is a pretty important uh, day, uh, so because uh, so, I'm going to go over everything uh, until now, now and then. So let's start with um, um, let's start with this. Okay, so yeah, so I'm going to do that first, and then I'm going to uh, go and talk about what's important out of chapter eight. So if you start with, um, let's look at uh, how how you would see it. Yes. And so uh, you've looked at 20 and 21, I think. And, uh, and then, so then there's, oh, you looked at this 22. What's quiz 22 is? Um, oh, see quiz 22 and tests and quizzes on the left sidebar. What's this? I've never seen this before. What's, oh. Tests and quizzes, now that wasn't there last time I was in Norway. Well, let me see what that is. Oh look, quiz 22. So uh, you're supposed to go in here and take quiz 22. And uh, so uh, this is, um, so this, this video is good because it's a, because it's a, because you're gonna ch get a chance to see the questions beforehand. See this, so you know, you're gonna get two chances to take the quiz. Um, you know, there's a due date, but then, so, so you can take it once by the due date, and then you can take it once, once before the end. 
Uh, I think that's the way I set it up. And, and you'll see how you did after the first one, you know, so, so basically based on what the first one, you know, and, and it's multiple choice. Okay. More or less. So let's look at it. Okay. So you, you folks at home now can, and you can refer back to this video if you want to look at the questions before you actually go in and try it for the first time. So let's, let's try this begin assessment. So the first question is, what is or are the objectives of optimistic concurrency control? Okay, so, so I'm gonna give you a little, it turns out that the textbook doesn't talk about optimistic concurrency. And if you search on the web uh, and look up, opt, figure out what optimistic concurrency is, uh, it's, it's a, it's pretty, it sounds pretty complicated, it sounds pretty general, but there's a, um, there's a simple, optimistic concurrency that you should always apply when you're making updates and you're making web pages that that cause updates to a database table and so I will uh, so I'll, I'll cover that uh, either uh, today or next time or you can just look it up um, but anyway uh, it's for something like this you can just look it up or you know it, it, you should look up and see what optimistic concurrency is because because it's the best way to do things for the web because because of various things uh, to ensure. And so you're supposed to pick, um, you're supposed to answer all the right answers. You see these are check boxes, not right? It's not a radio buttons. So you answer all the right questions. You answer all the ones that, are, that is true. Uh, it's to ensure serializability of transactions in a single user database or to recover from deadlocks or to avoid deadlocks or to ensure the serializability of transactions in a multi-user database or to ensure that correct results for concurrent operations are generated. So you check, you check which ones are true. Um, let's see. Well, it's not this one because you don't have to worry about concurrency when it's a single user database, okay? So I'm just gonna be stupid. What's next? Uh, advantages of optimistic locking are or is, it's kind of like the last one, isn't it? Provides better scalability, fewer physical database connections are needed. Is that true with optimistic locking or optimistic concurrency? The lock is obtained before the transaction is, is processed. The lock never needs to be obtained. The lock is obtained only after the transaction is processed uh, and update statements are less complex with it. Okay, so you're supposed to answer which ones are the right ones. Um, let's see, well, um, this is this is a dumb answer. That's silly. That's silly answer. So I'm going to answer that one. Uh, a transaction in which either all of the database actions occur or none of them occur uh, do is called or none of them do is called durable, committed, isolated, consistent, or atomic. Um, well, all these. Uh, all these words mean something. Is this the last one? No. Okay, so all these words mean something, um, but uh, I'm gonna answer one that's maybe not, um, uh, it's okay. Yeah, okay, it's not this one, it's not true. All right, what's next? Um, if a transaction is performed in a database and committed, the changes are taken to a previous state of the transaction using something. I don't know what it is. Uh, and the last question is, optimistic currency enforced using a single update statement can be used at what levels? And you're supposed to pick which level it is. Um, it's not this level. Okay, so anyway, um, that is that is the, uh, and then I, then I would go get to see my score, and I would probably get zero out of five. Um, now, do I get to see my score? I should get to see my score. Um, quiz 22, zero out of 10. Ooh, that hurts. See, because each question is two points. All right, anyway, uh, so that's that quiz. <clears throat> What's next? Uh, the next quiz, we can go back to here. And quiz 23 is this one. It's, um, Okay, so uh, so so I've always been a, a, 
I've always been a programming languages guy. Okay, my my research, I you know, I I took a compilers class when I was an undergraduate, and I just thought it was great. And, and uh, uh, so so uh, several pro for several projects in my whole career, I, I've 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 written you know recursive descent parser and had a higher level language compiled down into uh, um, primitive instructions, uh, whether those be assembly language instructions or even further down than that. Um, and so um, my dissertation was that I've, I've, uh, I've written a server-side scripting language, which I've built a lot of websites on and has, has features that PHP doesn't have, which make it kind of unique and everything. So um, when I started teaching this class, I think, well, gee, you know, this date talks about this, you know, look, uh, 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 defining uh, databases and database operations using relations as a as a variable type, and then you know you have you know program assignment statements and so on. So um, so that's the context of this of this question and assignment form of this quiz and assignment form. And I just tell you how to do everything and you're supposed to put it together and you kind of see what I'm trying to do here. <clears throat> so uh, I say, this is towards an instruction set for, for a relational processor. So it's kind of like if you were to have, um, um, for those, if you've taken 312, you learn about assembly language and you learn about the instruction set of, you know, the 86 or whatever, Intel, whatever. Um, and um, so, uh, so here, here is is here you're you're making you're taking you're making a, um, a store procedures that are macros that look like assembly language instructions, you know. But the op but the operands are relvars or tables, okay. And so uh, so so I say SQL is far from suitable as a primitive language for implementing a processor that handles relations as a primitive type. However. Store procedures. You can write macros to simulate a basic assembly language for a relational algebraic processor. And so here we're only looking at the at move, like um, you know, move. You know, where you move, you you move a, a one one. Um, you know, you move a variable or a uh, a memory location from one memory location to another. You know, you, you know a move instruction. So here you have, let's say, it, let's. You're you're going to design this this uh, store procedure that does a move, and so this is how you call it: call move M O V, and this is de the destination, and this is the source. Okay, so it's source to destination. You know, and, and um, if you took three twelve, you know, when you write assembly language, you you do you know the, the destination is you write that first, and the source is after that. So it's kind of like you know. Kind of higher level language because assignment statements you put the destination on the left and the expression on the right and so they do that but if you ever look at the assembly or you know it, it assembles down to to um to to machine code and you see um how it how it assembles into the actual instructions the ones and zeros of the instructions you will notice that the address of the destination is the, appears first because obviously it has to go get the it, it obviously has, I mean, the address of the, of the source appears first, and then the address of the destination appears second, because obviously you have to go get the source before you can store it into the destination. So, uh, so that is a little, a, a little misleading with assembly languages, but we're gonna do the same thing here. So, so we have destination comma source, and then a, a message thing in case something didn't work or failed, or whatever, some sort of, um, success message and so so it basically it's, uh, exports table s into table d and um so it's uh if d did not exist it's created if d did exist uh whatever was there before is destroyed uh and when the procedure is done table d has the same header and the same tuples as table s okay so that would be like a move statement so, uh, so I want you to, and, and here's the, the, uh, the stored procedure, okay? You can look at it and figure it out and confirm to yourself that this works. 
And so I basically just want you to make a, well, first make a copy of your supplier parts database and, and name an assignment for, I don't know why I have you name it that, but we'll see later. Um, and, then, uh, and then I want you to get this thing up there to work. And then I want you to create uh, an assignment for a directory in, on your server. And I want you to make, uh, and make this PHP page here, which tests the move which tests this instruction, or tests this thing. Okay, so, uh, and put in a test so you're, and, oh, and also put something in there. So, so, this is, so this is the more challenging part. Um, put something in there that will, um, that will uh, protect the original SP and SP. Okay, now you can, you know, you can, do this quiz without doing that. You won't get all the points, but it's it's just a, it's a good it's kind of a protection thing because when you're testing this thing, uh, you might destroy you know one of the tables, then you have to copy it over again. Uh, and then when you do assignment four, you might destroy one of the table. You know you might possible that you destroy a table uh, when you're testing. So uh, if you actually just put that in all your code, then you protect the original SP and SP. Um, Okay, so so anyway, um, so I give you the code here. I give you the thing, and um, so that's what I want you to do for uh, quiz twenty three, which is which would be like Wednesday's quiz. Yeah, Wednesday's quiz, and then uh, uh, quiz twenty four, which is going to be the last quiz. Um, I I I I I gotta. I want you to uh, know about entity relationship diagrams, and I think. I think the videos, those other videos, I think they talk about entity relationship diagrams in there. Um, and I'll go over this um, probably, this, this would be like, not Monday's quiz, because there's not gonna be a Monday, but it will be next Wednesday's quiz, it'll be a week from Wednesday. Okay, a week from this coming Wednesday. So I might spend a little bit of time, I should spend a little bit of time talking about, because uh, I like crow's feet notation, but you know, you can look this, you can look all this up. You can you can do internet search and learn all this stuff. There's a couple of different ways to make entity relationship diagrams, and I kind of like uh, this way. Um, and so so you can read this scenario, and this is the relationship between these these entities. You know, car, agent, client, property, and client. And so I I, I tell you the relationship, and I want you to draw the the crow's feet notation between these. Um, you know, some, some people don't like crow's feet notation because, because you don't really see, like in, in, this, in this kind of relationship, you don't really see the, um, it's, the diagram doesn't, doesn't really il illustrate the fact that when you implement it in SQL, you gotta have a table in between. Uh, and so, uh, you know, you can't really have, uh, you can't really implement directly crow's feet on both sides. You, you, you can implement it on one side and you can, you can do it without a table by putting, you know, the, the uh, address or the, the, the index, the, the foreign key into in the other table. But anyway, I'll talk about that uh, on, on this day, which should be a week from Wednesday. So anyway, uh, so that's it for the quizzes. Uh, and then, um, and then the assignment Four. Let's see what assignment four looks like. Assignment four. Okay. All right. Uh, is this right? No. We're fall and fall, aren't we? I'm gonna fix that right now. Let me uh, go exit this. And go here and go fall. Well, anyway, I suppose I'm going to have to fix the the other things too. Uh, so, so, so here it is. Um, Emulating relational algebra assignment statements using stored procedures. Okay. Make a database named assignment four that contains a copy of the supplier parts database. Okay, so you, you're so you're either going to do 
this for that for that quiz or you can do it for this assignment. Make sure you only have to do it once. Uh, inside assignment four, make a okay. Inside, oh, I forgot to tell you to make a to make the uh, a um, a directory. What, where is that? It's not here. Make a make a make a new database. Uh, okay. Uh, does this work? Yeah, it does. Make a directory on your server named assignment four. Now, why isn't it the same font? Look, it's not the same font. I might fix it later. Okay, uh, so do that. Uh, three, inside assignment four, make a PHP page with SQL commands, PHP that has three forms on it. And so basically, this is just so you can, uh, it'll here, you know, I mean, after you do a couple of these, well, after you do quiz quiz 23, you you have to do this, you have to do this kind of thing to, to test your move. And so you, you'll see it's easy. Um, so, so I want you to make one where, where you can uh, uh, insert a field list into an SQL, into a table, okay? Um, so it's just something that lets you, that lets me, the grader, insert stuff into your table and insert stuff into a table and then I'm able to go look and see at that special page where I can see, see your table and everything. And, uh, um, Uh, okay, and then 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 do one for delete and do one for drop, and then so the move table should be in there also. So you know this was this was in there for quiz twenty three, so that should be in there also. Um, and then uh, part two. Uh, so this is part two. This is the harder part. Okay, uh, so you know you're probably going to want to you know if you. If you uh, you know study with anybody else in the class, you know you're welcome to share you know your uh, your analysis of this so you can get this to work. You got to kind of put some pieces together. Okay, first you will get working a store procedure to test to see if the two tables are two if two tables are the same type. So okay, so so first you're gonna um, so you're gonna uh, Make a store procedure where you, where it takes two two tables as operands, and it looks to see if they're the same type. So all that is is looking to see if the create statement is the same, pretty much. Kind of. Um, uh, you could you. It's a it's slightly okay. Anyway, I I give you the code here to do that. Okay. Now, so so that just says if it's the same type, not if it's the same table. The same tables you know there can be two tables at the same header the same create table statement but um, but it's got different tuples in it so then they're the same type but they're not the same table okay then so so after you do the first thing then you're gonna do then you're gonna make a store procedure that actually tests to see if the two tables are equal and you can do that by first testing to see if the two types are equal and you just made a store procedure to do that uh, and then you can do it, you can join, you can do a natural join of the two tables and uh, it should have the same number of records as the two tables. Uh, and then you know that they're exact, the tables are exactly the same because if they weren't, then they would get, you would get, uh, you would get less table, you get less records. Um, uh, and then you will get, and then you'll get working a store procedure that uh, does D equals S matching M. And did we do that already? We did something where we, oh, we did a, yeah, maybe we, maybe you did a view or something. I think you made it, you made a view of S matching SP or something. So it's close, but here you actually make a store procedure. Um, 
to actually just so it's, so it's like an assignment statement and you're you're executing this expression you're taking that value maybe you can use your view and then but you take that table and you do an insert you know insert into this other table d which by the way is going to be d is going to be the same type as s right is s matching something is the same as s is the same um, so anyway um so here so first i give you by i, I give you below is a store procedure in wh which is invoked using this okay and it returns uh one this is a this returns one if the create table statement for p is exactly the as for t2 yeah well I, it's not grammatically correct but you know what i mean so if these two if it so this so this test the types and um you know um when you ask when somebody wants me to clarify part two of this assignment which somebody will sometime soon and then i'll go over this more more uh, carefully um but um this code does that it goes into the information schema dot tables uh ta table in your on your uh, on your mysql server um if you go into php my admin you'll look there's there's an information schema database um you know on on the left there's there's the database that you've created there's the, all the databases you've created but someplace there's a there's an information schema database and in there it's got all the information about all your tables and, and all that it's got all the, the, the you know uh so so you can look through that uh so so it uses a lot of that. All right. So, um, so, uh, so, so, so I give you that. Now, here's what I want you to do. Okay. Just, just seven things. Uh, first of all, I just want you to get that thing to work. Get, get this thing up here to work. You know, get it to work. Um, and. Um, and then I want you to make a page in your assignment for a directory named this with an appropriate input output parameters to test the store procedure. Okay, to, to test it. So I want you to so I want you to write your own equal type.php and you will be able to do that by taking one of the other ones that I give you. You can just modify it and get that to work. Okay, then I want you to create a, a copy of your store procedure and I want you to name it this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that copy of this and we're gonna modify it to make it be so this works. So it not only looks, uh, so it not only, so it goes beyond testing if the types are equal, but actually test to see if the, if the same number, of, to see if the, the tuples are the same. To see if all the tuples are the same. Um, so. So after you create the copy, I want you to add code that will test if the tuples are the same in each table, if their create table statements are the same. So if their create table statements are the same, then it'll test to see if the tuples are the same. And so then I go on to say, since the relvar headers are the same, if the number of tuples in P natural join P2 is the same as in both P and P2, then there are no tuples in one that aren't in the other. Therefore, they must be the same. Uh, so you can... Um, so, so you, so the number of tuples here and the number of tuples in here and the number of tuples in here, it'll also be the same number, same, and if it is, then they're equal. Uh, so this, now what this does, this, this, the code below performs this test, incorporated into your, okay, this code tests this, this. Okay, so this code tests that. So uh, you gotta just take this code and figure out where it should go in here 
and you get the whole thing to work, and I've got a little comment here. Help me. Give me a little hint there. Uh, so there's that. Um, and then uh, and then after that, I want you to make a page in your assignment for a directory named equal rel barn.php with the appropriate input and output parameters to test the store procedure. So, so in other words, I, I want you to make a PHP page that calls this thing so we can test it. And we can make a copy, we can use your move, now to make a copy of a table, and we can use the equal, see if it's the same, and we can use the insert or something to change, change the table a little bit, and then do this equal rel bar, see if it's the same, and just you know, test around, and we can, we can spend 15 or 20 minutes on each of your assignments. <laughs> or maybe we'll just, um, no, uh, you know, it's, the, way, the way this works is, is the first, three or four assignments, first two or three assignments, so it's probably the people at the beginning of the alphabet. Uh, you, you do spend a lot of time on those, and, and then you want to narrow it down so you only have to look at a couple or two or three things, and then if you know that, if you know those things work, then you're pretty sure that everything else works. If they don't work, then you might have to go back and check some other things because then you got to uh, give partial credit or whatever. Okay, uh, then I want you to create a store procedure that is invoked calling uh, this. So, um, yeah, that's, that's this last part here. Last, you'll get working a store procedure that inputs three table var variables, name that, and create, and to do that. And so, uh, so that's this last part here. I want you to create a store procedure that is invoked like this. And it evaluates S matching P and deposits the resulting rail bar into D. Uh, so, so this is a store procedure that you have to create that does that. So I don't give you that code, but I think you might have done it earlier or something. Um, and then, um, and then I want you to create a PHP program to uh, to test it. Okay, so that's. Um, that's that's the last assignment, and um, you know uh, it's this this assignment does uh, lend itself to to uh, you folks helping each other because once you figure out how to do it, once you go through the whole thing, and the first person that figures it all out, uh, it's really pretty simple. It's 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 kind of it's it's kind of like a puzzle where after you understand after you understand the whole thing, then you say, oh, I just take this code, plug it in there. Oh, that's just this, and you just piece these things together that you've already done. And really, the whole time, this exercise is you're is you're thinking about how you take a set of primitive statements and you collect them together into uh, these macro operations that execute the uh, the um, the assembly language instructions uh, from which you would write a higher level language compiler to assemble down into those assembly line instructions. So, you know, when you look at the instruction set of a microprocessor, not all instructions take the same number of cycles. Some instructions take longer and some instructions take, sh take shorter because really what's going on is deep down inside, you got exactly what we're doing here. You got microcode and, and when you get a certain instruction to execute a certain instruction, then it calls a microcode program which executes then you know, that each microcode program uh, step is his one cycle boom, 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 boom. and so uh yeah it's it's kind of the same kind of thing and uh the first the first uh project i did back in the 80s um the 1980s um when i actually got paid for this you know my first job as an electrical engineer at a place um it was uh, we had, uh, we were working on the first kind of guidance uh, missile systems for cruise missiles back in 1980. And, and uh, you know, it's, it was, uh, we had, uh, the scenario was, was the missiles flying like really close to the terrain and it's got a, and it's like a desert terrain for some reason. And it's flying along and the, it's got to know the map. It's got to have the whole map and, it's, and the ground is going by really, really fast, right? Because it's really, really low. And um, so it's got to process this data. And uh, so it processes like, you know, the, you know, 
mountaintops or it's looking for uh, features in the terrain that it that it recognizes and um, so you know we had we built this processor thing that executed this this microcode boom 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 and it was executing really fast and it was a, being implemented in in you know specials um, large-scale integration large-scale integrated circuits which were you know pushing the state of the art back then and um, uh, so so I was able to talk my boss into letting me write my microcode in in a higher level language and then I, I had this this uh, program written on it ran on a Vax computer and I can't remember what language it was in and, and basically it was a it was a you know recursive descent parser that, that parsed it all up and produced you know lines of my microcode and so that was pretty cool but um, <clears throat> Uh, so, you know, that's kind of what I'm after here. So you can imagine, you know, date has, has explained all this stuff. You look at uh, chapter seven and chapter 14, the two chapters where he tries to tie it, tie together this, this, uh, you know, relational algebra and, uh, designing database systems like, like you would writing a program. And so this kind of takes it to the next step if we, if you actually were to, to develop a, a language to do that. And if, if I were, if I were um, in my twenties uh, uh, working on my master's degree in computer science, I'd probably propose, you know, writing up a, something that does that. But anyway, uh, so, so, so that's assignment four and that's the, the extent of the, of the, I guess the theory part of this course. And, and after that, I'd like us to get together and um, I keep uh, da this database that I keep promising every, every year to these people. And I'll talk more about that. It's, it's kind of peculiar, but you know, those, there'll be quite a, quite a bit of time to do it. And uh, so, um, and um, uh, so you'll, you know, you, you actually have time now if, if you need to finish up all those other, all the other, um, the uh, study.com quizzes, which is 20% uh, you know, of the grade, fair amount, fair amount. Um, all right, so um, let's see, let me quickly, this isn't gonna take very long. Um, you, can, you can look at it too. Uh, let me look at this. Um, Uh, here's the chapter eight slides. And he spends a lot of time in here talking about deadlocks and locking and so on. And, uh, you know, it's important, but um, uh, we don't, uh, you, he doesn't spend any time talking about optimistic concurrency, which I think he kind of should spend more time on that. Let me make this so it's easier to see. Oh, I don't need to do that. All right. Um, so we are uh, transactions. Oh, this is transactions. Yeah, right. That's where it is. Uh, cons it's a. Uh, okay. So uh, it's it's this is uh, discussed in the context of transactions, uh, because uh, because. Really, when we talk about this topic, more has is, is covered more when we're talking about large systems, and we're talking about concurrency of databases and and a bunch of tables inside of a database. And you know, you, you have these processes, and they they want to go in and do a single update, and it involves you know a bunch of tables, and and it might not happen so super instantaneously, but but you gotta. Um, uh, you you have to start making these updates, and you can't let anybody uh, get in there in between to to grab data. Sometimes you can let people in there to look at data, but just but you certainly can't let let anybody in there to update data while uh, while you're doing your transaction. And so so that's what a lot of this is. But in real life, it's usually just a table. And you're updating a record, and somebody else is updating a record, uh, or you're buying something, and you want to, you you get the last one, 
and uh, so uh, and someone else comes in and sees it's there, but you know, but you got there first, you know, kind of thing. And so, um, so uh, here, here we here is where we talk about you know the asset properties and and all that. And started to talk about and and if you've taken operating systems, is it? There's an operating systems class, right? If you've taken that, it does the same stuff. It's the same thing. So a uh, program is a sequence of transactions where you store one transaction and then you do another transaction and you do another transaction and these in transactions, they have to be indivisible. So, uh, you know, there's going to be numerous, there could be numerous uh, uh, database references inside one transaction. And if for some reason it doesn't get all the way through, you want it to, to be as though it never started. So you want to do rollback, not not commit. If it, um, if you get all the way to the end and it's and there was no problems, then you do a commit, and which basically is okay. Leave everything I did. It's it's good, and I'm going to go on to the next thing, and and it's it starts again. Whereas rollback, you actually have to do something. You know, you have to go in and reverse stuff. Uh, so, um, uh, so a standard example is here. Let's say you want to transfer a hundred dollars from from one account to another, and you um, you uh, first you want to take the hundred dollars out of one account for the first account, and then you want to put the hundred dollars into the the second account, and in between there, um, or in, and you want those operations to be indivisible and see so so when you're doing this update here first you got to grab the balance you know you got to get it out and you got to subtract the hundred dollars from it make sure it works but then you got to write it back in again well what happens if in the meantime you know you grab the balance out and you're going to start doing this calculation here, and then someone else is—they're going to do the same thing. They—they they grab the balance out. They're going to do the same thing, and and you subtract 100. You, okay, it worked. Okay, you know, we're, we're fine. And you try to store it back in there, and you do. You store it back as $100 less. But this other process that also grabbed the balance in between the time you know before you wrote it back in there, okay, after the time you grabbed it, but before the time you wrote the answer in there. Okay, that some other process grabs it and they take out the hundred dollars. And when they're done, they it okay, and, and it works. And then when they're done, they write their balance back in there. Well, your your update got lost because it was overwritten by the other guy's update, and you both got your hundred dollars. <laughs> you 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 both got your hundred dollars, but but the account only had hundred and fifty dollars in it, and now the now the account has fifty dollars in it. And so where's the hundred dollars? Well, um, so that's what you want to avoid. That's that's the standard kind of problem, and um, and it's with an update. See, so because you grab one and you do something, and you have to have to put it put the result back. So so that's uh, uh, commits and rollbacks and transactions and and so on. And, and we've already covered transactions and and store procedures to to implement transactions, uh, but how is this typically done? It's, there's a recovery log and it writes, uh, so, so each time the database is about to do something, it's about to write something into the, um, so you could implement it like, maybe like a before insert or something. Before you, before you try to make the change, you write someplace the fact that you're, gonna about, that you're about to do this and then you do it, and if it works, then you can say, "Okay, it worked," or you, know, you can you can you can um, update that to to the next thing. Um, so um, so that way, if something doesn't work, you know what what didn't work because it was the last thing that was written. <clears throat> um, these these are these asset properties. This is a well known term that no matter what database class you take, you're going to, it's the same kind of term. Uh, it stands for uh, atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability. And uh, so um, 
atomicity, atomicness, uh, means trans transactions are all or nothing, and they're atomic units. Uh, consistency means uh, transactions transform a cons consistent state of the database to another consistent state uh, without, okay, without necessarily preserving cons consistency at, uh, at the intermediate points. Um, so by consistent state, they mean by a true state. Uh, you know, a, t a database is a table of facts and uh, I mean, a, no, a database is is like is like a database of facts, right? Because and everything in the database has got to be true. That's why it's in there. Um, and uh, so, um, a transaction may may in intermediately take the database out of the truth state because it's because it's in the process of updating something. It's got it's got to hit a few tables, um, so, you know, possibly. And so uh, it's possible that in the middle, but, but if it's a transaction, then if something breaks in the middle, then you roll back to, to the last consistent state, to which, which would be before the transaction even started. Uh, he doesn't really like that because, he, because if you're a real idealist, uh, even the intermediate states should be consistent states. Um, you know, and uh, so it's kind of like if you're going to insert a, um, well, it's similar. The idea is similar to if you're going to uh, insert, you know, let's say a supplier parts, you're going to insert a new supplier and a new shipment in the, in the supplier parts database, you have to put the supplier in there first and then, you, and, and then put the shipment in there because if you put the shipment in there first, uh, it'll be referring to a supplier that's not in the supplier table yet. Um, and, and in that case, since the consistency is enforced at a lower level, uh, you have to you know, be consistent when you, when you are doing that transaction. Um, isolation means any given transactions updates are concealed from all other transactions until it commits. So, uh, so you know, that makes sense. Uh, you, um, if you're doing a a transaction that does a bunch of you know updates, um, and um, and uh, and it's possible that if the whole thing doesn't finish, that you would roll back. While you're doing that, you don't want anybody going in there and looking, even if they know that it's that's that it might not be true data. Obviously, so that's that protects that from happening. So the system itself protects that, and then durability has to do with um, with uh, you know that once a transaction commits, and this is how databases are supposed to work, where if uh, once a transaction commits, the next moment the, the building blows up and everything is lost. Uh, so they go through the process of getting everything back again. So so tomorrow when when if people start coming to work, that building's back and the data is all there for them. Uh, it's it's got to be able to survive a a crash. So um, now you know in in reality, I don't know how that is, but you know, but uh, you may you may it could be like the daily backup or something in uh, in the real world. All right. Um, so uh, so if you think about what these four terms mean, atomicity is a, a logical unit of work, uh, and, and the consistency would be a logical unit of integrity. Isolation is is logical unit of concurrency. Makes sense. Durability is a logical unit of, of, of recovery. So the work in integrity, concurrency, and recovery. And so here, here we talk about, here he goes into to a lot more detail into, uh, uh, he doesn't like about, he says constraints checking along the way. Uh, isolation, this is that example where, you, where you're gonna update something uh, and, and you want to not be able to retrieve P, P in the middle because right here it's gonna be the wrong P because uh, it updated here and then it re reads it here and then something went wrong and it rolls back to here. Uh, so you know, that's why you don't want that to happen. Uh, here here uh, it has to do with 
with updating the example I gave you where this, this grabs P, this grabs P again, the same P that this thing grabbed. This updates P, uh, so now it's a different P, but when this thing updates P, it doesn't reflect what this update was. This update, this update here ends up being lost. Um, so, uh, so here he starts to talk about locking, and um, you can refer back to your operating systems for that. And and um, he's got some pretty complicated examples here. Uh, and he talks about deadlocks and so on. Um, uh, and so, so what I did then was I went and I spent a little bit of time trying to find some other slides which might talk about some of these things um, where they do talk about optimistic concurrency. And uh, this one does at the very end here. But again, it's read phase, validation phase, write phase. The, the read phase is, is, is you read up the whole thing that you want to be the same as it was when you read it up, you know, when you're done updating, when you, will, when you want to commit the updates, and so you can't have any changes in between then. So you, you read everything up, and by optimistic, that means, that means you're not locking, you're, you're not gonna lock anything, you're just gonna hope that nobody comes in in the meantime and tries to do anything. And um, so uh, it tries to do any updates. So then you're done already to commit these changes and then, you, so then before you actually do the, commit the changes, you have to do a validation phase where you have to make sure that what you read up in the beginning is the same as what's still out there. And if it is, then you do the right. And so, so you know, so now, <laughs> It may be that somebody went in there in between the time you read, you know, you read it all up, somebody else goes in there, okay, they read a bunch of stuff up, and, and you prepare your changes, and that other guy prepares his changes, and then you go to write, and you say, oh, it's just like it was when I did it, so boom, you write. And then the other guy comes in and goes, he, he, he does his validation phase, and he goes, oh, it's not the same. So then the guy's got to start all over again. So, you know, if it's, there, there can be, you can, you can come up with scenarios uh, where optimistic concurrency might not be the best thing. Um, uh, but um, but uh, all I really care about, okay, so those the problems is you gotta have that extra copy, you know, you have to have a copy of what you started with. Um, I, uh, the, only, the only optimistic concurrency that I, Want to, that I'll be looking for when when I'm looking at your stuff at the end is going to be let's see this one's got some optimistic approach you hope hope uh, con conflicts don't occur and then you test at the end and, and then now it talks about locking and so on. Um, is um, is uh, when you're doing updates and so uh, you might have a uh, a case where, let's see, I'm gonna put something up here well. You might have a case, um, let's see, how do I stop sharing? Okay, all right. You might have a case where, um, where you're gonna update a form, where you, you're gonna update a record. Um, you know, there's uh, the database at the end, is gonna, it's, it's gonna be people, and you're going to be, um, uh, and you're going to be updating a calendar and, and so on, but you're only going to be updating uh, like one tuple in one table at a time. It might be a big tuple. Uh, so, so you're going to uh, go out and get the contents of the tuple, and you're going to you, you have a, this, a form for updating, and you're going to populate the form with the current current data, and then you're going to let the user go in and change some stuff. And then the user hits the submit button, and then you try to, you know, you try to do the update. And at that time, to uh, in the where clause of the update, you test to see if the if the tuple is the same as it was when you grabbed it out the first time. Okay, so so if you're going to update, 
a person's personnel record and it's got 10 fields in there that you can change. Okay, there's, 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 and there's 10 fields in there that someone else can change. Okay, so you, you pull up all, and so the 10 fields are gonna be populated in your form. So you pull those up and in your form, you, you wanna save what they were in like hidden fields or something, you know, in the form you kind of hidden tags or hidden data. So you, you have the original values there and then you let the user make updates and then when you submit the update, you also send back the original uh, data and that goes into the where clause. And so um, the, the update won't, um, won't happen unless, unless your, 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 you know, your where clause is true and your where clause tests to see if the tuple that you're updating is the same as the tuple that you grabbed up originally. And so that's, that is a, that's a simple form of, of optimistic concurrency, but that's what it is. Um, and I want you to, and so that's kind of what I'll, what I'm looking for in, um, in, in the, in the database project that you're going to do at the end. And, and if there's a, in the, that one quiz, the quiz, I think that's today, uh, um, assumes that. All right, um, so I don't really have anything more. Um, let me uh, go back to screen sharing here. Uh, so so uh, that takes us to, I just reviewed here, the fifth. And so, uh, uh, so we will, uh, so SQL transactions in the relational model in chapter seven, uh, these two things are kind of are, are going to kind of be squished in I think maybe we might consider ourselves done talking about transactions today and the next time we'll, we'll sort of cover this stuff and uh, so um, next Wednesday I will uh, talk about your project I will explain your project to you and then then you'll have a full one two three about you know three or four weeks to do it. So you can have a lot of time, but I'm going to, so, but at that time during then you can finish the, the, uh, you know, the other quizzes and so on. So what, are there any questions? All right. Okay. Thanks for watching.